Hear us, O God, hear us. Show yourself, O God, give us life, give us hope. Hear these words, receive their power. The majesty of God, the Father ungirds all that is. The mercy of God, the Son, accepts our uncertainty and despair. The comfort of God, the Spirit, embraces us in communities of care. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And so is with you. you. Let us pray. Gracious God, help us feel your presence so that we might trust in you. Help us to know that you are always with us. Help us to believe that nothing can separate us from your love and your care. Reveal to us in Jesus, who is Christ the Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. 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 The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall bloom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. And then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fool, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe, comfort and heal them, and restore them to health and strength. Through Jesus the Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join me in reading responsibly Psalm 146. Happy are those who, whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who gave heaven and earth, who sees all that is in them, who keeps faith forever. Who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoner free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. You are bowed to Zion for all generations. Praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, with your help, we are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbor's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving wherever we are whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us, as we reflect your love through the people we meet. Amen. Amen. The second reading is from James chapter 5, verses 7 through 10. <clears throat> Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. 
The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the door as an example of suffering and patience. Beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbor and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, tend the sick, assure the isolated of our love for your name's sake. Amen. 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 The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 11, verses 2 through 11. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. He asked them, what did you go out into the wilderness to look for? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal places, royal palaces. And then did you go out to see? What, a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today we can pray, precious Lord, take our hands, lead us on, help us stand. We are tired, we are weak, we are worn, just like your servant John, Give us the guidance and direction we need. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In our gospel reading for today, we meet the disciples of John. We don't often think about John's disciples because we tend to emphasize the disciples of Jesus. But we learn in the Bible that John also had disciples, those who followed him, learned from him, and also assisted him. They had just visited John in prison. And he had told them to go to Jesus and ask him who he was. This is curious because John was the cousin of Jesus. And we can imagine as they were boys growing up that they often played together and were together. Sometimes the people we are closest to, it sometimes is difficult for us to imagine who they might become or who they really are because of those memories of an earlier time that we all shared together. We can only imagine what John's disciples were thinking on the day that John asked that question. They had been with John when John was proclaiming that the Messiah would come. And in the Gospel of John, we learn that, that Jesus was identified by John by the River Jordan. And yet in this story this morning, we find that John is looking for a reason, for a purpose for his mission and ministry. And he was trying to get that 
understanding and that purpose through the person of Jesus. He was seeking direction. Notice that John doesn't ask his disciples to go to Jesus and ask, why am I in prison if I'm doing your work? But rather, he asks his disciples to go and ask if Jesus is the Messiah, the one who had been promised centuries before. John would have read those stories in sacred scripture when God had promised the people centuries before that the Messiah would come, a savior to redeem the world. Well, when John's disciples end up arriving at the foot of Jesus and asked him the question, who are you? Are you the one? Jesus could have simply said, yes, I am the one. But instead, Jesus points to the evidence around him. In the Gospel of Luke, we learn that at the time when the disciples came, that Jesus was engaging in his healing ministry. He was actually giving sight to the blind, healing those who were ill. So he talks about the mission and work that he does among the people. And he points to the individuals around him as he answers the question the disciples ask in this way. He says to them, the blind can see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor are given good news. And then he asks John's disciples, what additional testimony do you need? Matthew tells us nothing more about John's disciples. We don't know if they discuss what Jesus had said among themselves or if they asked Jesus for a more direct answer. All we know is that they did leave and we assume that they went back to bring the message to John. John is a very prominent figure in the, Old, in the New Testament. He was the one who had predicted the coming of the Messiah and pointed him out at the Jordan River when Jesus was, was baptized. But on this day, John seems to be uncertain. He had gained much attention as he preached and baptized, but he was an odd looking fellow. He wore clothing made of camel hair and ate locusts and wild honey. This odd looking man didn't appear to be self-conscious. He was bold and straightforward in his teaching and preaching. He was a true prophet. And Jesus said that John was even greater than Elijah, the greatest of all of the Old Testament prophets. John was revered and respected by the Jewish people. He was great because he did what he was called to do by God. Even in those moments when doubt or uncertainty or cynicism came into his life, it did not deter him from his mission. And we know that prophets don't use PR tactics they are people of God. Their missions and ministries are a lifestyle. They are an example for all people to follow in faith. They are chosen by God to reveal God's will, God's hope, God's promise. Jesus said to the people that among those born of women, no one had risen greater than John the Baptist. This is a powerful image, a wonderful compliment. But John knew that Jesus the Messiah was even greater than he was. As we gather for worship, for Bible study, or prayer, we stand alongside the people of the first century and ask Jesus, are you the one? Can you possibly be the one we have been waiting for? Our Christian community helps us to receive the answer. Then we are commissioned for work through our baptism in and beyond our congregation. When we are one with Christ, we experience direction renewal and hope in a very special way, even in those moments when we might feel weak or uncertain or challenged. Our Christian community puts us in touch with Christ, where we are reminded that all we are and all we do is dependent on the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Today we are given these beautiful words of Jesus to remind us who he is and the way that God calls us to serve through Christ. In a way, we are modern-day prophets, fueled by the energy and hope that comes to us in and through Christ. We can remain faithful to the message of God's salvation and grace as we prepare the way for Christ in and through our congregations. At times when the journey becomes difficult, we can know even then that Jesus will be with us, for he has promised that he will be with us always, even unto the end of the age.
Amen. Amen. Let us pray to God who alone makes us dwell in safety using the response here our prayer. For all who are affected by coronavirus or other illnesses, for all who feel isolated or anxious, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are affected by discrimination, hardship, injustice, or social unrest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who need God's love and feel alone, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies that they may make wise decisions, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, medical researchers, that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for those who are ill or dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend them and ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we say the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth and heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May God give you strength to face the days ahead and grace to see God in the world around you and in the faces of the people you meet and know. Remember that life is a gift and God is a gift and love is a gift to be shared. May the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to know that God is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.